I mean, if I love sitting at the piano, producing that music, and that is in essence what drives my behavior, what really gets my juices flowing, is just doing it. I just like sitting at the piano playing. Now, that intrinsically rewarding or pleasurable activity will not only be enough to maintain my behavior, but typically it will also be a strong enough motivation that I will exercise a lot of choice with regards to playing the piano. This is where I'll start, oh, gee, you know, I, I could go out with my friends tonight, but you know what I'm going to do for fun and real pleasure? I'm going to stay home and play the piano. Ooh, Seinfeld's on TV. I like Seinfeld, but oh, I want to play the piano. Ooh, I've got a spare half hour here. I'm going to play the piano. Clearly, if something is that pleasurable and that enjoyable, the individual is going to start, you know, exercising a lot of choice that will engage in this behavior. Now, as a result, when a behavior or a set of behaviors is intrinsically rewarding to us and therefore drives a lot of these choices, we also tend to become rather good at the behaviors. I mean, the, the person that's always you know, looking for every minute to, to start banging them keys um, and, and, and is really getting a thrill out of it, getting a rush out of playing the piano, I mean, just in time and in passion and in motivation, they're, they're going to be a better piano player than the other person sitting beside them who has to take piano uh, because their parents won't give them any Christmas gifts if they don't. Um, and, and they've got to take, okay, it's uh, 12, 15, sit and play scales for 20 minutes. I mean, somebody that has no passion for it, who's going to be the better piano player at the end of the day? I mean, the one that is driven by that, that intrinsically rewarding feeling and motivation. Now, while that can be a very powerful motivator, in many cases, as I said, there are outcomes, almost inevitably. And in some cases, those outcomes start to take on value. And so we will have behavior that is intrinsically rewarding, and then we will have outcomes that have extrinsic value or are called extrinsic rewards. So our little piano player, driven by this passion, suddenly finds themselves putting on little concerts, engaged in competition. They're starting to get trophies and plaques, and maybe a, a mention in some column in their local little newspaper, maybe with a little photo. And when they show up, people are saying, oh, play us a tune, play us a tune. And they're the center of attention. And then people are congratulating them, and you're wonderful, and you're great, etc. And, and so these positive outcomes start to accrue from what was initially and primarily an intrinsically driven activity. We don't have to go much further than all of our own experiences, probably fairly close to this, um, in your own scholarly behavior. If all of you think back to when you first engaged the educational system, um, whether it be at a, a daycare center, or in kindergarten, or even in grade one, there is a good possibility for most of you that that whole thing was initially intrinsically rewarding. There was a thrill factor to it. Um, to, to get that, that, those big pencils and, and, and those paints and stuff. And, and, and to do these things, yeah, all right, I just love all of these little crafts and artsy things we're doing. And, and, and to actually write your first word. Ooh, I can do, ah, ooh, ah. I can do it now. Mommy, Daddy, look at my ad. And I mean, the thrill you kind of get from that. 
But inevitably, of course, that pursuit for knowledge and betterment and education that is intrinsically driven starts to produce extrinsic outcomes. Bummy and Daddy put your little artwork on the fridge. Um, there's a thing called report cards. Smiley faces, sad faces, gold stars. Uh, there's a ranking now that starts to occur within these classes. And then eventually, of course, grades are assigned to your outcomes that you produce. And there's tests and exams and papers. And these additional extrinsic outcomes, in a lot of cases, are additive motivation. So we get behavior that is intrinsically driven. I love learning. I, I love you know acquiring knowledge and information. But I just you know, I mean give me a textbook and just oh I can hardly wait to open it and read everything in there. And then of course as a result of that I could also get grades and diplomas and, and, and whatnot else and better job offers. <laughs> intrinsic plus extrinsic. Arousal, energy goes up even more, there's greater persistence, and the person is making more difficult challenges, and those choices to engage more difficult challenges. Okay, so in a lot of cases, it's additive. But I think many of you, when you're thinking about yourself, well, I was walking through that example. You're kind of wondering whatever happened to that intrinsic reward. Uh, many of you sitting here probably now view your education as work, not play. And that it is almost exclusively outcome driven. And opening up a textbook is not intrinsically pleasurable. It is a necessary means to the extrinsic value of the end. Getting a grade, getting a diploma so I can get a job. And that's it. Whatever happened to all of that intrinsic reward and value? It was not additive. 